Hi guys, we are looking at CC3, uh, section, this is section 2.1.4 of CC3, and specifically number 244, 2-44. Diamond problems, more practice with diamond problems. There's a fraction in there, so that's going to take some thinking. It's more light there. Okay, so... These diamond problems, remember the, the pattern with diamond problems are the top is this, the product, right? It's that X times Y, the product. The bottom is the sum. It's the X plus Y. So if I've got my two numbers, in this case, my product and my sum, of these two numbers is what I need to find out. So product, negative four times negative seven. Negative times a negative is a positive. So then four times seven is 28. All right, and then add those two, a negative four and a negative seven, make that a negative 11. So we have 28 on top, negative 11 on the bottom, okay? And then in this case, we've got two numbers that are going to multiply to be negative 12 but add to be positive four. So one of the ways to look through this is right, is you start with 12 and start thinking about all the combinations that multiply. What times what is 12, right? So we know that three times four is 12, two times six is 12, and one times 12 is 12. And then think about if I have a negative on top, one of them has to be negative and the other has to be positive. Because a negative times a positive or a positive times a negative is negative. That's the only way you're going to get a negative product, right? If I multiply a positive and a negative, I get a negative number. So that being said, if, if one's negative, one's positive, then you know when you add them, you really are subtracting the numbers, right? So what, which of this set of numbers has a difference of four? Ah, the two and the six do. So now I can say, I know it's going to be 2 and 6. Now the question is, which one's negative? Which one's positive? Well, my sum is positive 4. So the bigger number has to be positive in order for them to subtract and still get a positive 4. Okay, I hope that helped. Let's go to C. C, now I'm given one number and the product. So at this point, I'm saying 1 half times something is equal to negative eight. One half of something is negative eight. Well, first of all, if my one half is positive, that number has to be negative because positive times a negative makes it a negative. The next thing is, is well, how do I, what do I take a half of in order to get eight, right? That would be 16. Half of 16 is eight. So that's gonna be a negative 16. And then now the sum, you're gonna say negative 16 plus a one half, All right? In this case, what do, you, what do you do when you add a positive and a negative number? This is a positive, this is a positive number, that's a negative number. You really subtract them. So what is 16 minus one half? Well, that'd be 15 and a half. And then 15 and a half, now is it gonna be positive or negative? Oh, it's gonna be negative because there's more negatives than there are positives. Right, so there's more negatives than positives, so I made it a negative 15 and a half. So that's gonna be my sum, negative 15 and one half. Okay, last one, D. This time they give me my numbers. So first thing is the product, one half times one fifth. And when you multiply fractions, you just multiply straight across. You know, one times one over two times five. So my answer is gonna be one tenth. So that goes on top, the product. On the bottom, you got to add those one half plus one fifth, right? In order to add fractions, you have to have a common denominator. Well, in this case, my common denominator is going to be 10. So this becomes five tenths and this becomes two tenths, right? You've got to do the giant one to get the common denominator to get the equal the right numerators. And so then when you add them, right, the denominator always stays the same and you add the numerator. So my bottom is 7 tenths. All right, there you go.